In the last video I made, I tried to make a prediction for the 2018 Senate races, and now I'm going to try to do the same thing for the House. That video was almost a half an hour long, and we got 65 blanks to fill in here, so we're, I'm going to probably not go into this as detailed as I did for the Senate race. Let's just take a quick look at where the battlegrounds seem to be. There are a couple of predictions in here that are all pretty close. Uh, Sabato has 211-198 with 26 toss-ups. Cook has 211-200 with 24 toss-ups. Inside elections... Okay, this one is more leaning toward the Republican. They have 227 here already, which, which is the majority. So let's go back to the um, battleground map. And what I'm going to try to do, I'm just going to go through this district by district, uh, which is the only really fair way to do this. It's the only accurate way to do this. We, we can look at, well, we're looking at statistically a 20-seat pickup when this sort of thing happens, but you've got to look at every race as individual. So... I apologize in advance if this video turns out to be long, but I'd rather do this the right way. Obviously, whatever I come up with here is, is still up in the air. We're barely through. Pri we're not barely into the primaries yet. Uh, let's start up here in the northeast. We we'll just start east and work our way west. Uh, so we have the main second. Oh, I didn't mean to colors yet. We have the main. Second, and it looks like. Ah, oh, we go. Maine second, and New Hampshire first. So, I'm going to zoom out here. So, the professional, see, the, uh, the predictions seem to be one each, New Hampshire going Democrat and Maine going Republican. Let's just take a quick look. New Hampshire, you have an incumbent Democrat and a Cook PVI that's slightly Democrat. So I, I can see where that would, uh, where that would be the case. Uh, oh no, it's, sorry, it's, it's, First, okay, but again, so it's, it's still pretty close. The Cook PVI index is kind of, uh, it's not candidate specific. It's just a measure of how left-leaning or right-leaning a district is. Uh, so that, I, I can't definitively say that the candidates running have nothing to do with this rating, but I think it's more toward the electorate itself and not necessarily uh, toward any candidate. Main second, the incumbent would be favored here. Um, it was a 51-41 Trump district. New Hampshire first was a... F oh, that was... Okay, that was a 48-46. Uh, I'm still going to go with the incumbent. I'm, I'm going to go with their recommendations on this one. I, I, I'll... You know what? Okay, maybe we can make this... Yeah, I don't think we need... The, I'm not going to worry about shades here. We'll make this one Republican... That one, Democrat. Yeah, maybe we'll do that one. Okay. Let's go to a few in New York here. We have New York's 19 and 22. I'll try to do these two at a time. New York's 19... I don't know if I have, you know, let's, let's make this, let's alphabetize this. I think we're somewhat out of order. New York 19 and New York 22. So both of them have Republican incumbents. Both of them went for Trump. Uh, this one went for Trump. By, uh, New York 22 went by a large margin. Um, they both, both of these people voted for the omnibus. I put this in here a few, this column in here a few weeks ago, thinking that, <coughs> excuse me, that Republicans who vote for the omnibus might be slightly less reelectable. Um, but 
I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. I just left the column in there. Poor heritage ratings, but I think these are strong enough Republican districts. I, I think that uh, I'm going to call these both slightly. Oh, 22. Not 22, I'm going to say solid. Okay, uh, working our way down to New Jersey. Lee Zel oh, well, we'll go to New York first. Uh, but more to New York. New York first. Lee Zeldin. Another toss up. A good heritage score. Good PVI. A strong Trump district. Uh, and voted against Omnibus. I, I, I'm, I, I think this would we definitely call this Republican. Uh, working our way down to New Jersey, state which I know pretty well. Um, now we have some openings here, particularly I believe uh, the first was one of them, wherever that is. What? Or maybe it was, well, it was 11, sorry, it was 11, not the first. Freling Heisen's leaving. This is a district that could certainly flip. Let's uh, kind of highlight all these. I think six, oh, well, six, well, six is not going to change. What are the, well, let, let's start with these three on top, right? So we have five, 11, five, seven, and 11. Hmm. All of these except for seven. Seven was a Clinton win, but the rest of these were slight Trump victories in terms of that district. Uh, Freling Heisen's not running for re-election. I, I, I would say if the Democrats are going to make a pickup in New Jersey, it would be this one. Uh, and I'm going to say, well, like five could be a Republican pickup, to be quite honest. I think... I think seven stays Republican, and I, I'm going to split the other two. Five and 11. Let, let's assume those stay where they are. Uh, New York, oh, I forgot here. New York, 11. Left a New York out there. Um, maybe with some of these, if... If these already have a pro rating, I think I'll just defer to that. I've done that so far, I think. Um, New Jersey, two and three. New Jersey, two and three. Hmm. Both Trump victories. Cook is slightly in the GOP favor. Lobiondo's not running for re-election. I'll probably say two Democrats, three Republican. New Jersey is more right-leaning than people think. It's a blue state, but if you look carefully, most of that is in this corridor up here. You go to the south, you go to the northwest, there are some quite red areas. Uh, it's just there aren't enough rural areas to balance out places like Newark and New Brunswick and, and Trenton. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is going to be a nightmare to try to figure out with all the redistricting. redistricting. Uh, one and seven are pure toss-ups, it looks like. This tends to be a Democrat area of the state. So that would probably work in their favor. Uh, one, I don't even, one I don't even have in here. Uh, seven, I did, these, this spreadsheet does reflect the redistricting, and of course, you never know who's running for, for, uh, for what district. Um, but considering how these are in, I, I'm going to probably go and put these both in the D column, just, that's my hunch there. Working our way down. We start out with 65, we're down, oh, 52. Maybe we should go this a little faster. Um, uh, this one, if, if there's a, uh, a red predict, Virginia 7, Dave Bratt, come on. Uh, Barbara Comstock, Virginia 10, 
Let's take a look here. It was a Clinton. Uh, this is one of those Clinton districts where Clinton won, and it's a poor heritage rating. Voted for omnibus. Democrat. Yeah, I. I yeah, I, I, this is. That's going to be Democrat, I think. Let's see. What did we, right, oh, another one of the Pennsylvania. This one, this is in the area where you had that Connor Lamb victory, and it is closer to Pittsburgh. So I, I would tend to think that one's, if one of them turns out Democrat, that might be it. Keith Rothfuss, though, is an incumbent Republican. It was a Trump district, and I'm going to figure, you know, the guy running, I'm forgetting his name, the Republican running against Connor Lamb, he was kind of an outsider. Uh, Connor Lamb is a very rare conservative Democrat. I don't think you're going to see too much repeat of that. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say R for this one. Just because it's an incumbent Republican in the district, and it is an outlying suburb, uh, it's, it's in a slightly more right-leaning area. Okay, uh, let's go down to North Carolina. Ted Budd, I think, will retake Robert Pittenger. Again, North Carolina 09, we can take a quick look at that. Yeah, I don't, I don't see this one going blue. I just don't. It, it, Cook PVI of 8. The guy's, a high, the guy's a strong Republican, high heritage rating. And heritage rating, heritage foundation rating... They rate all of senators and representatives on their conservative record. I didn't even bother including the rating for Democrat candidates since they're all, they're going to all be like 20s. And there are some Republicans who are pretty low too. But I figure if they, if they, if they finish the high heritage rating combined with the fact they didn't vote for that omnibus bill. And again, I don't, I don't know how relevant this still is. I, just, I put it in a while ago. I figure I might as well keep it in. But when you take all of these factors and combine them, I, I think this definitely rep points to Republican victory. And, and i got to say this about the whole blue wave, red wave thing. It's going to come down to turnout. Bottom line is the Republicans are not giving people a reason to vote them back into office. That's the, that is the problem. It's go if the Republicans have an Achilles heel, it's going to be energy and voter turnout. But a couple of things i got to say on this. And that is that all these retirements, I don't look at them as a bad, th as a sign of uh, impending doom for the Republicans. It could be that way in some cases, but I think by and large you have rhinos who have been exposed. They've, they've run as conservatives in the past. They've showed their hand by voting against the president on a lot of things. And I, I think they realize they couldn't even win a renomination, much less a re-election. And so this is an opportunity to get fresh blood in there. Um, so, you know, I don't know how much you can really look into that. Let's go up to Michigan here. Dave Trott, Michigan 11, is a Republican incumbent. Trump district, fairly strong. I don't know why I don't have anything for omnibus bill there. I don't have any heritage rating. I, I don't know. So I, I'm not quite sure what happened there or why I don't have these numbers in there. I, I'm going to... Hmm. This is a tough one. Well, let's err on the safe side. Uh, and we'll, we'll say Democrat. I shouldn't say safe side. I'm biased. I, I fully admit. So many, so many people who make these videos are, are, are biased and they don't say it. I would like to see a Republican majority. There, I've said it. <laughs> I, 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 you know. Uh, let's see if there's any place we missed on the East Coast. Oh, Florida and Georgia. Is this Georgia 6 by any chance? It is. I don't see why Karen Handel would, would lose that. I mean, she just won the special election pretty recently. Florida. Florida, Florida, Florida. Always comes down to Florida. Well, this is a, a, a pro pick for Stephanie Murphy. I'll, I'll go ahead and, just to keep this from not being extremely long, if there's, if there's a pro prediction, I'll tend to go with that unless there's a very, very specific reason why not. Um, Florida 26, 
Boy, this is this is a, a purple area of the state. Let's just see. Carlos Curbelo, incumbent Republican, but a strong Clinton district. The Cook PVI and heritage rating don't look good either. He has not been voted against Omnibus, but then again, some Democrats voted against it. Yeah, I, I, this, this could definitely be a flip. So we're 203, 197 so far. Illinois. Let's do Illinois. This is Illinois. Come on. It's Illinois 12. Now let's do 14. Let's do 6, 6 12, and 14 while we're at it. Um, 6. 6 and 12? 6 and 12? Well, they're split in terms... 12 went to Trump by a lot. That's not really surprising. Um, voted for Omnibus, low heritage rating, that's true. But Illinois is not a real... It's not a strong Republican area. I mean, Illinois is a blue state, but this district... Then you have up in six. The guy's not running for re-election, so... And, and this one... Well, this one would come down to whoever gets in there in terms of the challenger. Uh, and let's... Wait. That's going to be a tough call to make. Is there... Oh, no, we don't see a challenge. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this one as R and this one as... Uh-oh. I think I switched the wrong one. I don't know what I just did here. I think... Yeah. I think that's the way it was. All right. Again, I, I'm... This could be... It's so difficult to make, especially since we don't even know a whole lot of the uh, people in the race are. Wisconsin won. Okay, so this is Paul Ryan. Or what well, well, the one he's not running re-election, but that's his district. I don't know what to think of this one. It's a plus, it's a five for Cook. And it is a Trump district. I, I, I know it depends, again, who gets the nomination. There was that talk about that guy, Paul Nealon, who was challenging Ryan. I haven't heard anything from him recently. Um, so, I'm going to think this will tend to stay R unless, it, unless there's some reason to think otherwise. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put an R for that one. Minnesota, a lot of uncertainty in Minnesota. Let's see if there's anything we can probably fill in. Very little is certain here. Okay, let's 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 do these in blocks here, so we don't. Minnesota one, two, and three. Okay, so two and three have incumbent Republicans. One of them has a slight Trump win. One of them has a strong Clinton win. And the one that's Democrat was a heavy a Trump district. And all of these are rated as toss-ups. <sighs> boy, oh boy. I, I think two is probably Republican. I, I, it's a, a strong cook PBI. Democrat, but again, it's a Republican in the cook PBI and heavy for Trump. I'm going to say one and two will go Republican. Three could be a flip. Three could be a flip. Mm, that was three. These two. All right. Iowa. These two districts, yeah. Iowa one and Iowa three. 
I don't see these flipping. Um, Iowa three, David Young. Yeah, this seem this all of this seems to point to except for the omnibus part, but that that's a minor thing. The rest of this seems to report to Republican, point to Republican, and quite frankly, so does two. I mean, two is is a toss up district. I mean, it's minus it, it's one toward the Democrat, but. Ah, uh, this may be going out on a limb here, but I'm I'm gonna say R for both. I mean, I am biased. Uh, I, I'm. <laughs> I don't know. It it, it, it that that these could go either way. Um, Nebraska, is this second? It must be. Yeah, Nebraska's second. I mean, Obama won this district in 2008. Kind of tells you where we are here. Um. Don Bacon, incumbent Republican, a slight Republican win. Cook PVI. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see this going the other way. I could be wrong. Actually, you know what? I'll I'll do a reverse on that I. I'll put that one back in, in Democrat. Just so just no one can accuse me of being too partisan. <laughs> uh, okay, so Kansas looks like we have two and three. Got to make some better time here. Kansas, two and three. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's much, I mean, two is pretty obvious. Three is going to be more competitive. Guy has a good heritage rating overall. Kevin Yoder, Clinton won, but not by much. I, I'm going to put both of these. that. All right. Arkansas, Arkansas 2. I mean, this is a GOP prediction. I, I, can it, will any Arkansas district be flipped? French Hill, he seems pretty strong. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much discussion on that one. I mean, we could, but I mean, at this point, we're 214-201. I suppose there'll be a margin of error for this. Montana. Greg Gianforti. Is he even running? He, he could have problems with the incident that happened just before his election to the special seat. Um, would it be enough to actually flip the district, though? Um, I don't even have that. This is rated as the, the, the pro rating is Democrat for this, so uh, Republican for this. So I'll, I'll go with that. All right, Texas. I think we had a few in Texas. Oh, this small one. I didn't see that one. Texas seven seems to be rated Republican slightly. I would tend to agree with that. Will Hurd, Texas 23. This this could be one of those risky ones for Republicans. Um, but it's a pure toss-up. That border area. Boy, uh, I got to say D for this one. I, I'm just, it has a Republican incumbent. But this is an area that, for better or worse, is getting a bit bluer. I think we got to put that one in, in the D column. Oh, there's another one here. This looks like Texas 32. That's probably safe. Republicans, yeah. All right. How many we got left to go? Oh, 16. And GOP is only one away from majority. It's going to come down to turnout. And it's going to come down to can... The Republicans put good candidates in there. And can they counter this Democrat message? I mean, the, you know, the Democrats really aren't running on anything. And I, I think the Republicans have to take advantage of that. My personal opinion. Uh, where are we here? This is Colorado 6.
Yeah, this looks like a D. I, I say that looks like a D, probably. Uh, let's go down to New Mexico. We got a couple. Oh, no, only one in New Mexico. New Mexico second, Steve Pierce. Not seeking re-election. Incumbent Republican not seeking re-election. And it was a fairly uh, good performance for Trump in the gen in 2016. Uh, it's also very close to the, to the border. Well, you know what? I think I might have been leaning some of these Republican late. These. So I'll put this one in the D column. Uh, New Mexico... I think it's, well, I'm not going to get into that. New Mexico, I think, is is turning blue, even more so than Colorado. Arizona, too. Martha McSally, now she's running for the Senate race. So, I got to, is she even, or at least I think she is, one of them. Uh, yeah, and she's not running for re-election. It's, it, it's a close district. I think this might this might go Democrat. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. It does say pro. The, the pro pick is Democrat. So I'm not gonna go against that. Um, Arizona first, big district here up in the east northeast. So it's clearly a rural district. It's a slight cook PVI. Democrat incumbent. This is going to come down to whoever the Republican can. I think this is certainly ripe for Republican taking, for to be a flip. It's going to depend on who they end up running. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm going to say, I'll put it as D for now. We'll, we'll see how this see how this one goes. Uh, Utah, Mia Love. Yeah, she's pretty strong. I, I, I don't, that 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 makes two eighteen right there. Let's uh, finish these off. We got Nevada three and Nevada four. What are we, over to half an hour here? Well, you know what? I want to be thorough here. You can play. You can always play this on one and a half speed if you really want. <laughs> um, that's what I do sometimes. I mean, um. Nevada four it looks like it points to Democrat. Nevada three. Hmm. Much closer. You have a Democrat who's not seeking re-election. I would probably say three Republican, four Democrat. That's how I would split this. Uh, yeah, this one. That could be a a, a Republican flip. Okay, which. There's nine more. Let's I think most of those are looks like they're going to be in California. Are any, nothing is in Arizona, Alaska, or Hawaii. None of those. Okay. So let's go to Southern California. Um, 49, Daryl Issa. They say he's not running for re-election. So that would hurt. But he, there was rumors he might be running in a different district. So I don't, I don't, I don't know... Yeah, I gotta say this. This, I mean, I would say if he were seeking re-election, I would definitely have this as an easy R. But I, I, I have to go with the pro pick on this one. Uh, Rohrbacker, let's go 40, 30, 39, 45, and forty-eight. Rohrbacker, I don't see him getting. Yeah, I, I, he, he's going to be very strong. Even though uh, the, the, uh, that district went slightly to Clinton, I would probably say 39 could be a Democrat flip, but I don't think the other two would be. 30, so, uh, 39 Democrat, 45, 48 Republican. I'm putting all of these in light colors because I really I, 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 I don't feel comfortable making any of these as solids. It's not too many of them. 
Uh, California, 21 and 25. Both incumbent Republicans. Both Clinton won districts. Both at least are toss-up or lean Democrat. I would probably say 21 is definitely going to be D. 25... 25. Whew. Wow. I mean, you're basically caught between a dark red and a dark blue. Um, since there is a Republican incumbent, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that one. All right. Jeff Denham, California 10. We're getting, obviously, we're very close to the Bay Area here. He's an incumbent Republican. Not great on heritage, but it was a slight. Oh, it was a Clinton. Sorry, it was a Clinton win. Yeah, let's. I'm gonna go D with this one, just because where it where it is in the state. Is that it? How many more we got? Looks like we got only two more, and those are both in Washington. Okay, uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers. I don't see this flipping. <laughs> She's like second in uh, Paul Ryan, second in the House. And it's a very heavily Republican district. The, the, the Cook PBI. Yeah, it's Republican plus eight. I just don't see that going. Uh, Reichert is not running. He's an incumbent Republican. And it looks like a Democrat leading district, although where is it in the state again? Oh, it's kind of in that central. This part here is pretty Republican, but this half is more densely populated. I'll go with D for this one. That could be a flip. So there we have it. 223, 212. That's going to be my, my play for now. So I think this pretty much, I don't know what the number is. It looks like it's going to be a slight net for Democrat from where we are now, but not quite enough to take the lead, although it will be close. And I certainly, you could easily go plus or minus five in either direction here. So I'm going to do another, do this again in, sometime in the future uh, when we have better idea of the incumbents and uh, of the, of who wins the primary races. But for the time being, I think this is going to be my call. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions on this one. Fire away in the comments section. And thanks for watching.